stand up. It's uh -oh. very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Give it an order. <laughs> gonna have to hold it. Uh, I'm impressed you've got Wi-Fi. Well, I think yeah. Well. Hi, Natalie. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Connie. Hi. <laughs> I'm oh, moving, but I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can hear you. I can hear you. Galbras, hello. Hello. <laughs> You're muted. Nancy. Natalie, where's Vandenberg? Have you started your trek north? Where's yes, they have. Yeah, we're, we're here. Waiting for an invitation into our laps. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Donna. Nina, that's her name. Where's Nina? Hi. Hi, hey, Anna. Oh, oh she's at church. Yeah. Hi, Donna. Oh, there's Charlie. Yeah. Hey, Hi, Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Keith. Morning. Morning. Morning, Keith. Good to see everybody. We'll give it a couple minutes and let folks gather up. Huh? Morning, Bone Sax. Morning. <laughs> Somebody's bird is happy. <laughs> Morning, Evan. That's our clock. <laughs> Your clock. Um, <laughs> bottom right. Oh, I see Evan. Hello, Rosses. Hey, Mark. Nice to see all these fathers up so early. <laughs> this is late. Church this morning. Hello, oh, Ben. When we start regular church again someday, I'm going to miss getting up late. I know. Right. <laughs> he was just talking to me about that this morning. She was coming back from a run and she said, See you at church. He said, You know, it's great. You just go for a run and zoom in and no one cares. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll still have online worship. That's true. We'll Hi, Mary. Hello. <laughs> it's going to be actually a first reality. So. How's my dingling doing? <laughs> okay. Be more Very well. How about you? <laughs> are you at home or camp? Oh, you are home. If I was at camp, I wouldn't be zooming. Oh, <laughs> oh he's a real <laughs> Morning. He's not Evan. She's Sylvia. People, can I see? Uh, oh, Bob and Kelly are not wearing the same color shirt today. I've come to expect the matching shirts. <laughs> All right, one more minute and we're going to dive in. Hey, Warren. Hi, Warren. Well done, he's on. John Johnson, she comes on. What happened to Kathy? John. Here? Okay. Yes, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, see you, Connie. Okay, I was just keeping track of you. <laughs> <laughs> People are hopping around the screen. <laughs> Hi, Noah. 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 Hi,
Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day. It is good to be with you on this day that is drier than yesterday. We are really glad to gather with you this morning. Uh, we're here with Erica in the Connection Center worship space. Although in a little while, you'll see us from another space. We're really having way too much fun with this traveling show we've got going. <laughs> a couple of announcements for you um, this morning that we will share after the prelude, which appropriately is Faith of Our Fathers. to be together on Thursday with some of our United Methodist women out at the Presque Isle Pavilion, uh, socially distant from one another and yet still able to have some fellowship and good conversation about some possible upcoming projects. A couple of other things to know about. You should have seen our schedule for the coming weeks, which is next week, still online worship via Zoom. And then coming soon, a series of outdoor worship opportunities, still this same 10 o'clock time, which seems like a good time for combined Marquette Hope worship, three weeks, July 5, 12, and 19, and online worship continuing on those days. It will not be this kind of live, in-person, um, online worship, but it will be posted to both Facebook and also our newly launched YouTube channel where you can watch some back sermons and other things there. Yeah, so the online worship um, starting July 5th will be an online version of the worship, but it'll be available at the same time at 10 a.m. on our Facebook page and also our new YouTube channel. So if you're not a Facebook person, you'll still have easy access to all of those videos of our online worship. And then following that series of three outdoor combined worship services, we are hopeful, as we know you are hopeful, that we will return to our buildings. And so uh, we will just continue to monitor what our governor and our bishop are recommending and our leadership board will make a decision about that. But of course, we are hoping to return to our buildings after that time. I would invite you now to join Erica in our call to worship. <laughs> Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for pause us this, for moment. this moment. moment. Bear us up in this time. We believe you are creating the light that will shine through the brokenness of our life. We are open to your possibilities. 
and all the people, all the people say, say Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Friends, I invite you to pray with me. God, we come before you today, and we have much to lay at your feet. We carry burdens that are heavy. We are worried and anxious people. And yet, we come on this beautiful day that you have made. We come knowing the beauty of one another and the beauty of the world that you have made. And so even in the midst of worry, even though we struggle to conquer fears that we may have, we are your grateful people. And we just take this time to observe what it means for you to pour down this grace upon us, to observe what it does in our hearts and our minds and for the ground under our feet, for you to provide us with this depth of strength. And so we have the knowledge of your power, the knowledge of your presence, the comfort of the presence of each other. And so we come to you on this Sabbath day, in this Sabbath time, we gather as we are able to be the church, to be your kingdom here on earth. And so do your good work among us. We welcome and invite your spirit to move among us to give us direction, to give us confidence and courage for these days in which we live. And when we gather as your people, we pray together the prayer that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for Amen. Um. All right, I want to spend some moments talking to, um, well, our children and anyone who wants to listen, um, because we're all here. Um, and so this morning, what I'm excited to share is that we are glad to see this beautiful summer springing up around us. It was a little rainy yesterday, but summer is turning out to be pretty beautiful. And today looks like it's gonna be a nice day too. So we are glad and grateful to live in such a beautiful world and lucky enough to live in a beautiful part of it. But even though we've been talking a lot about beauty and beautiful things, this morning, I wanna talk just for a moment about something that isn't. Maybe something that's broken or maybe not perfect. And ask the question, how can something that's broken be beautiful? This week our Bible verses tell us that God takes care of broken things. If you look around right where you are, can you see something that's broken, not completely broken and broken, but maybe something that's not quite right. Maybe you're sitting at home and you have a coffee mug with a chip in it. Um, maybe you've noticed that there is um, a little gouge in the, the table or something like that. And that's fine. It's okay if something isn't perfect. That's one of the neat messages that we have uh, for today. And so I have a broken, a broken crayon. And that's okay because this crayon can still make pictures. I can still make things pretty 
with this nice pink crayon, even though it's broken. So I wanna teach you a fun word today. That word comes from Japan. The fun word is wabi-sabi. Have you heard that word before? Everyone say it, wabi-sabi. Wabi-sabi. What a fun word. <laughs> um, even though it sounds kind of silly to say, it's actually a pretty serious and important idea because what it means is that everything is beautiful, <laughs> even when things aren't perfect, even if things are broken, even if something was made but it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to, it's still beautiful. It's wabi-sabi. It's, it reminds me of when you get um, a cut on your finger and what do you put on it? A really cool band-aid with a neat design. Yeah. Maybe it has Paw Patrol or all kinds of cool things. Batman, Star Wars. Star Wars. I mean, there's so many choices. And so a broken thing like a cut on your finger can still be beautiful. What if something even worse happened? What if you broke your arm and you got a cast? What usually happens to a cast? We decorate it. It's fine. They come in cool colors. Your friends write their name on it. And that's awesome. It makes something broken, something beautiful. And that is wabi-sabi. And that is okay. And it's a reminder that even in this world, things that aren't right are still beautiful. And that is a wonderful reminder of just how immensely God loves us because every part of this world is God's <laughs> love for us. We can see it all around us. And so that's the, the fun idea and word for today, wabi-sabi. Wabi-sabi. <laughs> there you Got go. Um, the, the beauty of this world is all things, even things that aren't perfect. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this life and this world. We are glad to know that even if things break and even if things aren't quite right, they are still beautiful no matter what. And no matter what, you love us. And so for the world around us, that even when it's not quite right, reminds us of how much you care for us. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today's scripture comes from Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. It, it is good to sing praise to our God. But pleasure in the truth of praise. The Lord builds Jerusalem, gathering up Israel's exiles. God heals the broken hearted and bandages their wounds. Understood, we can't hear you. That's my number, giving each one a name. For the Lord is great and close to love. God's knowledge can't be grasped. The Lord helps the poor. Throws the wind down on the dirt. Sing to the Lord with thanks. Sing praises to our God with the ear. God covers the skies with clouds. God makes rain in the earth. God makes mountains sprout green grass. God gives food to the animals, even the big rams when they cry out. God doesn't cry the strength of a horse. God doesn't treasure the Lord treasures the people who honor him. People who wait for the people That's it. This morning's message comes to you from Scandia from Thursday morning. Um, but it's here for us to share now. Um, so we've enjoyed, like Christy said, being able to bring some of our buildings to you. Uh, and so uh, 
who wanted to make a run out uh, and enjoy this beautiful space. Um, and so here is the message. Where is the message? <laughs> it was there. You might get it live from the Connection Center after all. No, it's right here. <laughs> it was here. This worship series, these last few weeks, all about beauty, the beauty of God's world and our place in it, the beauty of a life of faith lived in God's grace with others. And today, it's about beauty as well. As much as I would, from my own interest and in education and intellectual curiosity, want every sermon to be just a bit of a history lesson, and if possible, throw in some art too, so even better have it be an art history sermon. Now I know not everyone is interested in that, but today we've already veered in that direction, talking a bit about how we decorate and appreciate the imperfections of life. So maybe that's what we should do. And it's kind of exactly what the psalm is about today. God heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds, and this same God waters the earth and makes things grow. God restores the people, rebuilds their land, and gathers up the exiles scattered all throughout the world. It sounds a little bit like God is trying to hold online worship and people are joining the Zoom meeting from all over the place, wherever they happen to be. We've already talked about wabi-sabi today and that idea that we can accept and embrace things that are imperfect and transient. This idea that sees beauty in all that is imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. I like that idea, and I think it really resonates with people of Methodist heritage. It's the same idea as going on to perfection. Things aren't perfect yet, but even along the way, we can be glad about the way things are and about what we've learned because there is a joy in the journey itself and beauty even in our imperfections. A further elaboration on this idea would be another Japanese tradition, kintsugi. Maybe you've heard of this. It's what happens when something breaks, like pottery, a plate, a bowl, a vase, and the cracks are repaired with gold. And so instead of trying to make a repair that hides the cracks, they're made the most important thing. They're highlighted to show how wonderfully, beautifully, the cracks make a brand new design. Things that are broken can be more beautiful than before. They don't have to be given up on or abandoned. And personally, that is a message I really need to hear right now myself. And maybe some of you do too. Because the world feels like it's somewhat broken right now for so many reasons. And that could potentially be really discouraging if we let it. And if we don't, it still might. That's how unusual these times we live in seem to be. And yet, think about our faithful ancestors, and maybe our not so faithful ones for that matter, throughout the whole story of the Bible. Did Noah sit on the deck of the ark at night and lament that he was living in an unprecedented time? How about Daniel in the lion's den? What about the disciples between a certain Friday and another Sunday morning? Not to mention all the saints, martyrs, monks, and nuns of the early church who, when the emperor decided your God was a threat to him, had to wipe out everyone associated with this threat to his power. Unprecedented times are part of our life as the church. And the fact is, we worship a God of unprecedented times always. As commentator Ali Utley of Vanderbilt University writes, 
We worship a God of unprecedented times, a God who rebuilds what has been destroyed, who gathers what has been scattered, who knows us better than we know ourselves or our situation. There are times in our lives, moments in history, when things get unimaginably hard and we don't know what to do. And still, divine beauty shimmers through the universe. Out of the great struggle also come great stories and images of great resiliency and hope. The psalm is a good example. And Dr. Wendy Farley, whose book is the background of this worship series in this season, also makes a connection to this idea of the beauty of the world around us. Art and creativity open underground rivers in our soul. They give us enormous pleasure. They open us to rich layers of meaning, symbol, myth. They help us criticize what is wrong with society and celebrate what is right. The psalm for this week seems to do all these things in a profound way. Beauty is not a luxury any more than food is. Without food, our bodies die. Without beauty, our spirits die. And beauty itself, well, it's certainly in the eye of the beholder, but it's also visible in unlikely places and situations, like a broken vase pieced back together, or the stars in the sky, as the psalm says, and certainly the people God made, who it says are highly treasured. It's because beauty is really a spiritual matter. We may see and have beautiful things, but beauty itself, that can't be possessed. It exists for its own sake, outside of and through all things, and it timelessly endures no matter what else happens around it. It's a reminder that something exists other than what we can control. And we certainly try and capture it in art, of course, in sculptures and paintings and architecture that we describe as beautiful. We try to capture beauty in those things. So think of a Rembrandt painting or, great example, the Sistine Chapel. But even those examples need some bandaging and restoring. As you probably know, there was a restoration of the Sistine Chapel that went on for decades. And as that work was being done, it revealed that that magnificent work was perhaps even more vibrant and vivid than anyone previously knew. It just needed some repairing, just like we do. And the psalm reminds and reassures us that God heals and cares for us. It says God heals the brokenhearted, and those very words to me sound like the scripture equivalent of the gold veins that bring a kintsugi bowl back together and make it more beautiful than before. Whatever happens, good or bad, we can confidently trust in the mysterious, gracious presence of God in our lives, in our world, because God is still so madly in love with creation and wants us to be in that same love. We don't have to go far. We don't have to go to some filtered, curated, exotic, Instagrammed location to see a world of beauty. It's the one God made that we live in, even if we're cracked we get rebuilt. Even if we're scattered, God brings us together. This week, as we contemplate beauty and awaken to the beauty that is all around us, I ask us to consider a few different responses, friends. The first response is to continue what we've been talking about these weeks. Contemplate. Spend some time thinking, reflecting deeply. In this case, think of something that is beautiful and why it is. It might even be something that's a little bit more in the eye of the beholder, something a little bit more wabi-sabi. Another thing you could do as a response this week is to fix something. 
Not because you need another chore on your list, but fix something as a spiritual discipline. So repair, restore, gather, go back to some project that you put off and see it through. Think of whatever it could be. Does it need super glue or spackling or a fresh coat of paint? How can you kintsugi something in your life? Do this prayerfully. And remember, this could be a thing, some object, but it could also be a person, a relationship. And lastly, one response could be to gain perspective. See the perspective that is already all around you. And remember, remind yourself that no matter what it seems like, these unprecedented, strange, and difficult times are still the times and places where God is with us. Amen. I'm glad I found that video. <laughs> um, that was not a planned um, illustration of Wabi Sabi, although I guess it could be. Um, and I wanted to share, um, in case you've noticed the kind of background part of our slides this morning, um, if it looks like asphalt with gold veins through it, that's because that's exactly what it is. Um, it's an example of a work by an artist named Rachel Sussman. And what she does is do large scale, real life kintsugi. So she does these installations where she will put in um, the filler and the gold dust on a parking lot or a sidewalk or a building. Um, and it's a neat kind of large scale art installation, but it's also a great commentary that the world can be redeemed and even if it's broken, it can still be beautiful in its own way. And so I just thought that was really interesting and wanted to share that. Um, I want to thank you while we're talking about sharing for the incredible sharing that has continued throughout all of these weeks of being apart but connected online and the ways that folks have been generous and faithful in offerings is so appreciated because it keeps our church together um, so that we can be together in whatever way that is we can continue our commitments and our ministries and so thank you please continue to mail use the give plus app send online banking checks they come right to the office and they are needed and much appreciated. So thank you for your faithfulness.
world is so varied and beautiful. So seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator and the companionship of the Christ and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. Thank you for the nice service. Thank you. Absolutely. What's everybody doing today? Happy Father's Day. I'm going for a bike Thank ride. That sounds great. And, and then fishing. And then fishing. Perfect. Does anybody remember when your children were young and they had the TV show Zoom? Zoom, yeah. Zoom, Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> and my boys would wear Zoom t shirt. They'd be walking around the house singing Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Zoom, Zoom. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's not here. And I would like to bring it up. Okay. We can get you a t shirt if you want. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I was extremely lucky this morning. Why is that? Carol made my favorite breakfast, crepes. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Really nice. Breakfast, crepes. Yeah, your oh, favorite. Great. What did you have on them, Zane? Oh, I was very. I just had brown sugar and. Berries. Blueberries. Did you Blueberries. roll them up? No. Oh, yeah, you have to roll them up. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them with your hands. Yeah. That sounds lovely. <laughs> Carol makes excellent crepes. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I made toast. Oh, we're chicken, too. Yeah, I got toast. <laughs> I made toast. Come on. Come on, Carol. <laughs> Give it a, too much pressure for the rest of us. Yeah. Tom had his favorite French toast. Oh, okay. Good deal. Oh. French toast. Yeah. toast. I like that preaching from the pulpit. Yeah, yeah. how about that? I had cereal with blueberry yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> I've had Diet Coke. All oh, right. That's That's delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Trying something new, I see, Lorna. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So is there a band concert? Is that this week, Cheryl or Lorna? Oh no, Lorna, you're not in the band, are you? No. No. Cheryl is. Cheryl is. You gotta unmute yourself, Cheryl. Yeah. Unmute. You can't be yeah. our tech support if you're on mute. Or make sure you wait, wear your masks and stay six feet apart. And where is the location? That's the first part. The Commons on Third Street. When? 
Thursday. I'm guessing 7.30. That's when we usually have them. On okay. Thursday? Yes. Okay. I think you'll probably draw a big crowd. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, so. And Steve has said he's not sure he really wants a big crowd. He would <laughs> like an audience, but he's not sure about a big crowd. Yeah. Just yeah. because of the distancing problem. Yeah. We are officially related. Ruth McDougall and Tom and I, our grandchildren, were married yesterday, and the rain held up for about an hour. It was an outdoor ceremony. Oh, no man. It was a, a very it happy occasion, wasn't it? It was, it, was, it was just a thrill. It's our fifth grandchild to be married. We only got 15 more to go, but it's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> it was so nice for Ruth and I and Tom because um, the first time she told me, I met a fellow by the name of Grant Holmstrom. I said, that's our grandson. So that, it all started. And they'll be in the area for about two years. They're both working on a graduate program at Northern. So nice. that will be nice. That's fantastic. And now you're officially related Ruth. We're Ruth one, Ruth two. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Who's Ruth two? Bye. See everybody next week. Right. Wait, 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 no. <laughs> 36. <laughs> we're, at, we're at church from Ann Arbor. We were with our family yesterday. It was a lot of fun. Oh, neat. Good. I got up and baked four loaves of banana bread. For, What's the matter with you? It's wow. my daughter's <laughs> birthday, and I thought for Father's Day I'd do some for the guys. Wow, wow. nice. Uh, bye. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rowena. <laughs> and my only accomplishment this week was the guy who mowed my hay field a week or so ago. I got to mow his lawn a couple two days ago because it must have been about eight inches high. I'm seeing the rain's going to be coming and I'm wondering why he hasn't mowed it. So well, I owe him. So I went over to mow his lawn and part of his field. And then I, I didn't see him. He wasn't home. And later, because it was so high, of course, it needed to be raked. So I'm out there starting to rake and he comes out and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm cleaning up the mess I made before. <laughs> and I found out that the uh, starter on his mower blew up. He can't get another part for at least 10 days. So I know I'm going to be doing it this week. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the more. <laughs> Hi, happy birthday, oh, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Hey Roger, I'm wondering if you're going to bring the convertible to worship on July 5th. Well, I guess. Oh, that could be his outdoor time in his car. Yeah. As long as it's over 30. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> not a thunderstorm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Roger. The coldest Roger. is when the top the top down is when it was 28 for a homecoming parade once. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh, awful. So we'll stand by on that then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Christine Christopher, do you think you could, um, from the office, could we get the Zoom information for the Mitchell Methodist in case we wanted to attend their service? Yes. Yep. You, yeah. Could you post that in the newsletter or something? Yes, we can. Some of us might want to log in. Their service is at, what, 11? Um, yeah. Yep, I think it is. So, yep, we can get that information. Okay. They yes. are... Um, their um, ad board made a decision that they aren't, um, they haven't set a date at all for coming back in the building. So they'll be, you'll have lots of chances yet to see them. Uh, Zoom okay. Yep. Yep. We will. So we can, we can run down to the connection center and then we can quick buzz home and get on our computer and go to, <laughs> go to the chair and Connie. <laughs> we give out prizes for time. Okay. 
go to tons of worship. Yeah. Thank you. Good idea. Hello? Hi, Alex. Yeah. I'm finishing up church service here. <laughs> That's okay. You just stay right there. I can have you both on at the same time. I see your boy, Donna. Yep, that's Alex, my little one. <laughs> there we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, He's, she's waving to you, Pat. <laughs> you can't see anything. <laughs> see? He's like, no? hey, you can't see me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, it's the end of the service, so. Yeah. We're having social hour. Crazy. We're having social hour. Oh, you can stay right there. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. All yeah, right, I'm going to say Pray for my daughter, please. She found out that no, her uh, bye -bye. employer wasn't going to bring her back, and but she does have a job interview next week. No. Oh. Yeah, that's a combination. So hopefully the job interview will take over where the other one left off. Anybody else catch that Don wedding? Yes. I saw the pictures. She posted what five pictures online. I told her she needed to be seen. Yeah, they, they had it on YouTube. You could watch it. Oh. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was the Granville United Methodist Church YouTube channel. Huh. It might still be there. You can probably watch it. Okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah, no, you can watch it. You can watch it after the fact. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Sawyer does an awesome okay. job bringing Deanna down the aisle. It was a nice little service. Yeah. And, then and so all I have to do is just go to that Granville United Methodist I Church, huh? Yeah. I am the ceiling. Okay. I am the ceiling. I'm I sure it'll be a technical okay. challenge okay. like Let everything else. Let me catch you. I see the Balmers are busy today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I hope everybody has an awesome, fun Father's Day. It may yeah. be Happy Father's go. Day, tell the dad. I'm Bye, everyone. Have a good Bye. day, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>